Hello, hello, hello. OMG, welcome back to my channel. So excited that you are here. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I appreciate you. It's Jody Dunn coming at you with another weekly video. And you can see I'm in my shed. So I got in here and completely decluttered the shed. It's been about a month ago. It was jam-packed. There was no room to even walk in here uh, because it was just filled with junk. And we have a floor that needs repairing. So I'm finally getting it done this week. I know absolutely nothing about repairing a shed floor. So I had to contact uh, probably the only person I could think of that is absolutely amazing and ask for some help. So it took a little time to coordinate both of our schedules, but she came over and kind of assessed the situation. And what I told her was that I would like her help with this, but I wanted to do as much of the work as I possibly could myself because I wanted to learn how to do this. So she left me with a pry bar and uh, one of her tools. We took out a little bit of the floor already. She kind of walked me through how to do it. And so I am out here now trying to rip up the rest of the flooring that we're going to be replacing. We're not going to be replacing all the whole entire floor, just basically this first section in the front that was bad. If you're new and you just found me, I am so darn happy that you are here. Would you please say hello to me? Uh, let me know that you are new right down in the comment section. I would love to welcome you to the channel and say hello back to you. And if you are already subscribed, thank you so much for coming back to another video. I appreciate you. So you can see I just tried to use the hammer. I know this is only a couple minutes into the video, but I've already been working on this for 15 minutes. And um, this is freaking hard. <laughs> this is hard. You would think with the way the floor looks that it'd be super soft and super easy to tear up. Well, it's not. There were very small sections that were rotten enough that I could pull it up. The rest of it was dang rock solid. And this was my first time using a pry bar. So, <laughs> of course, the first time you ever use something new, there's a little bit of a learning curve. And she left me this dang oscillating tool, and I was like, forget it. We're putting the power tools to use. This definitely made me realize how not strong I am at all. If you see me doing something and you think to yourself, oh boy, she's using that tool wrong. She should have done it this way. You're probably correct. Again, first time using these tools. And it's really easy to look at somebody when you have experience and think, oh, why didn't they do it that way? Well, we all got to learn. And we all start off at the same point where we don't know what the heck we're doing and just trying to figure it out. So that's what I'm doing. I, of course, search YouTube. Uh, that was my first resource, and I literally could not find any videos repairing a shed floor other than uh, people that actually lifted up their whole shed to repair the floor, which was not an option for me, or just videos that really didn't go in depth. So, this probably is not going to be a super exciting video because I'm literally taking you through and I, I promise I didn't feel every film every little piece of it but I'm literally taking you through as a new person trying to figure out how to rip up this old floor so I can replace it how I'm doing it and I did resort to the power tool the oscillating tool a whole lot because like I said this floor was so dang rock solid hard that using, first of all, I wasn't using the pry bar correctly, <laughs> which I will soon find out. Uh, but again, first time ever using it, didn't know how. 
And um, it, w- it was literally, I was using all of my strength. I was stepping on the end pieces with my full body weight and they still weren't breaking. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, how am I going to get this up? Here was my first clue. I put the pry bar, not my first clue, but I put the pry bar in between the seams of the two pieces of particle board and was using a hammer to try to pound it in there more. That is a really good way to use uh, the pry bar. However, I should have had it turned the other way. In this piece, I could step on and break it off because I already cut it with the oscillating tool. (laughs) So the woman that is coming to help me is absolutely incredible. She is 70 years old and she has more knowledge about so many things than anybody else I know in life. She grew up with her mother and her father and her mother taught her so many homemaking skills. She has hemmed pants for me because she knows how to sew. Um, She knows, you know, how to do canning, cooking. She knows how to do all things homemaking but her father also taught her how to do so many, um, I don't, what's the word I'm looking for? Handyman things. That's the only thing I can think of. She is so incredibly handy. So she will be coming back to help me install the new portion of this floor to fix it up. And I want to get as much of this floor off as I can. And the hubs was uh, playing volleyball in the front yard with Donna Jean and heard me using power tools <laughs> and came around back to see what I was doing. So he makes some comments, something like, oh, we just got to pull the, the, bar- the bad parts up like it's so easy. <laughs> and then he tries to get to work and he's like, wow, this is hard. He picks up the oscillating tool. He thinks it's like a regular saw, and so I'm trying to show him how to use it. And he was like, oh, I don't like that. So then he just started putting the pry bar to work here. And when I was watching him get in between the seams, I was like, oh, I should have used the other side of the pry bar with the hammer. (laughs) But then this was where I was like, oh, You put the long end of the pry bar underneath and you use the hammer to wedge it under there and then you can pull more of it up. Of course, it's all nailed down as well. (sighs) This was, this is my look like, dang it, why didn't I think to do that? It took me 45 minutes to get this particle board. The floor is particle board. Uh, from the first beam to the second beam up. That's how dang long it took me because I'm telling you, this floor was in so solidly. (laughs) And while I'm not very strong and I was unsure what I was doing with the tools, so all of that combination just made me, I'm always grateful for help when the hubs comes and helps. But I'm telling you this, I was... I was like so, so grateful that he was helping me with this because it would have taken me a few days to do this. Then he says, oh, I'm going to go get your little mini chainsaw. And I'm like, dang it. (laughs) Why didn't I think to use the mini chainsaw? That's a great idea. I mean, that oscillating tool definitely was way better than me trying to pry this floor off. But the mini chainsaw worked a lot quicker. Now, can you make these smaller so they can fit in the garbage bag? This one might fit. Just break it in half. Hang on. Yeah, you say that like it's so easy to break this. But I did have to giggle to myself because at first he was like, oh, this is going to be 
so easy. We just pull it up. <laughs> and then he starts working and was like, wow, this is hard work. And it gets out a power tool. And then guess what happened? The battery on the mini chainsaw <laughs> broke. And he accidentally knocked over a gas can. So I had to run and grab some kitty litter. There was a teeny little spill of gas on the floor. So that was the first thing I could think of to hopefully soak that all up. The battery didn't break. The battery ran out. <laughs> so the mini chainsaw needed to be charged. This is... Ugh. Almost done. Almost done. And the nails were so old and rusted that some of them weren't coming out. And then I was watching the hubs and I was like, oh, that was smart to use the pry bar uh, to help pull the nail up. <laughs> Full of my hydrangea. Oh, another spider. Oh, Threw the dang piece of particle board right on my poor hydrangea. <laughs> all right, now I'm going to get all this mess cleaned up, all the leaves and stuff from the critters being in here before we put down the new um, portion of this floor. And the hubs and I were both laughing because he was sweating so much that his glasses were wet <laughs> from the sweat dripping down. This was a hard physical job. It took him 45 minutes to get the particle board off of two spaces that it took me 45 minutes to get it off of one space. So I'm so, so happy that he helped. All right, we are now at Home Depot looking for uh, a replacement floor. So we are looking for a sheet of plywood, and this is the one that she wants to go with, and this is my friend Vivian. Uh, we went with this pressure-treated one. She wanted marine plywood. She said that's way better in case it gets wet, but this one will do as well. She didn't want to go with anything particle board or OSB, and like I said, I trust her. And, uh, deck screws is what she wanted, not nails. We are also grabbing some liquid nails. And I also grabbed some blade replacements for her oscillating tool. Uh, because we did go through a couple of those actually and then and I wanted to replace them and then uh, I'm grabbing some mothballs as well to put on under the board that we're going to be replacing to help detour any critters those are strong yeah they are Jeez. did I buy enough this would have been my first time ever smelling mothballs, and I was kind of taken aback at how strong they were. I've never used them before, but uh, apparently they work really well. So uh, we're just laying down some of the mothballs. And her and I worked for about an hour before we went to Home Depot getting the last scraps of pieces up that we needed to get up. She was so incredibly patient with me because I was asking all kinds of questions because I, I just wanted to learn. 
and you know, giving me directions, okay, go here, do this, do that. I'd say, why are we doing this? What do, what benefit does this have? And she, she was just absolutely amazing. So we're just laying down some liquid nails now before we put uh, this piece of plywood down. Her experience comes from many years of learning from her father how to fix and build many things. Uh, she went into dye making and got her journeyman's card, which I think is correct in saying there are not very many women that are in that field. And then um, she eventually went into engineering as well. She purchased a house that needed to be totally gutted and has done so much of the work herself. So she is just Oh my gosh, she has so much knowledge and I so appreciate her helping me with this. I have talked about Kathy the painter on my channel before. Uh, I worked with Kathy who now owns her own painting business and this is Kathy's mom. And Kathy and I are, I just love Kathy. We're good friends. And um, it's funny cause she'll text me sometimes and she'll be like, hey, when mom gets there, can you give her this and this and this? <laughs> <laughs> Instead of saying when my mom gets there. So Vivian's like a second mother to me. And she brought her humongous pry bar, which she calls the boss. <laughs> and I love that. She goes, I should have left you with the boss before. Oh my gosh, this thing was so much easier to pull out nails using the boss. Oh, I got to get me one of these. Anyways, um, we're trying to get this underneath and realize that we left some of the old particle board underneath, plus the, I don't know, the edge here had to be cut down just a little bit um, so that we could fit it underneath here so it was a snug fit. And she's just using the oscillating tool for that, and that, that really was the hardest part of this, was getting it underneath there. But man, like she had me stepping on the edge so that it was down as far so we could get it snug under there. She's stepping on it. And that pry bar is flipping amazing. It just moved the whole board. <laughs> I was like, I didn't even know that was possible. Well, I should say the hardest part was getting up the old floor. The hardest part of replacing this is getting it snug in the corners. So we're getting the deck screws screwed into uh, the support beams, and uh, I miss the support beam. Yes. Oh my gosh, I pulled the screw out, you know, in reverse that I missed the support beam. And then the next screw wouldn't go in and I couldn't figure out why because I never took it off in <laughs> reverse. We have a small gap on the one side of this that she's going to go ahead and just use some of the uh, old floor that was still in solid condition instead of purchasing a whole nother sheet and barely using any of it. This was just a money saving way um, to fix the floor and make it solid again. So it'll be a little mismatched, but that's okay. All I care about is that it is solid, safe, and usable. 
and throughout this process of ripping up the floor and then getting the new one installed, I learned a ton. And one thing I learned is I didn't really care for it. <laughs> I've been kind of interested to learn possibly how to build them some things, Ugh, but ripping up a floor to replace it, it was not fun. I'm glad I did it. And I'm glad I have more knowledge now than I did going into it. Um, but I don't know that it's anything that I will ever want to do again. And Vivian was so funny because, you know, to get the board underneath the tracking, basically, where the door goes, it was too, too tight. And she had to cut a little bit, which is fine. But, but then it was still not exactly working. And she's like, it's okay. We're going to persuade it. <laughs> and I was like, how do you persuade it? And so basically, you know, she just took the pry bar on one side, which you'll see in a second, to lift it up and then hammered it in. So again, this was just an overall great learning experience for me for sure. And I'm so happy to have a little bit of this knowledge under my belt now. Um, but it just, it wasn't my favorite thing. The installing was totally fine. It was the ripping up the old floor. <laughs> that wasn't my favorite thing. And I have this metal rack um, that I said, we're going to have to replace this because it's all bent. And she was like, no, we're not. We're going to bend it back into place. There's no reason this is a perfectly fine piece of metal. But it was nailed down and she's like, we should not be nailing this down because it's just going to pull up. So she put some different types of screws in here and they just kind of hammered as she went to straighten everything out. And I think we discovered why the floor in the first place had a little bit of damage. We do think there was a little bit of water damage and um, which opened up an area for the animals to be able to chew through. She said that the seal on this door, um, it's not good. It needs to be replaced. So that's something I'm going to have to look into doing. She was kind of feeling it, and we're going to go ahead and close it, and she's checking the seal, and sure enough, it needs to be replaced because eventually it will get water in here again and could do more damage. She's so funny. I just love her. Uh, so anyways, it took us about four hours on this day between having to go to the store and everything. But uh, let's take a look at what the floor looked like before and then we'll take a look at the afters. So this is what it looked like once I got the whole shed cleaned out. Just a little bit of damage right there. This side had quite a bit of damage. All right. Well, there it is. <laughs> Much better. It's mismatched. But that's okay. It's solid. It's sturdy. That's all I care about. Hubs has got the lawnmower out right now because he's mowing the neighbor's lawn. Uh, the poor guy had a heart attack. And so anyways, we're just trying to help him out a little bit. But so happy that this is done. I learned a ton. It wasn't my favorite. <laughs> but it's done. And now I can get in here and do some organizing, which I am very, very excited about. And you probably heard the lawnmower going in the background. There he is helping out. Uh, I kind of volunteered him for this job, <laughs> which I don't think he was super happy with me, but he'll help anybody out that needs help. All right, thought I would give you a little update on the front yard. So uh, I now have uh, I already showed you the hummingbird feeder that I put there and I put up a new bird house there. Then I put up a suet feeder there and another hummingbird feeder. I just, I want to make this tree like all, all for the birds. My husband's adamant that he wants to take it down this year. And I'm like, no, we're not taking it down. Maybe it'll come back. Maybe it was just shocked from all the chlorine treatment that happened with the well being fixed. Maybe somehow it will come back next year, but let's go take a look at the flowers. 
just the view from right here just makes me so happy because it's so full. Okay, let's take a look at my dahlias. Come on, little guys, come on. We're almost in September when I'm filming this. Uh, they all look healthy. Uh, this guy here, he's going to be flowering soon, and I cannot wait to see what color this is going to be. I think I've got two buds on that one, maybe three. Um... And I've got these couple of guys over here. And if you've been with me for the whole time, then you already know this little guy struggled so bad. I thought for sure it was going to die. And I don't know. Somehow it is coming back to life. And it's got a bunch of new, beautiful sprouts, healthy sprouts. I don't know if it's going to have time to actually flower at this point. But... I did just leave it alone. I didn't do anything with it. Just kept watering it and babying it a little and she's coming back. So I got my pots out here. Um, this pot here, my zinnias are struggling. You can see all the deadheading I did yesterday. They were thriving. Now they're struggling. I don't know why. I don't know if I didn't do enough drainage stuff at the bottom. This has holes in the bottom, so the water does drain out. But I know I put like a bunch of sticks in the bottom of this one. I don't remember if I only put soil, but they're just not. I don't know. I got a lot of new buds that are coming, but they just, they're not, they don't look like these babies. OMG. Uh, you were with me probably when I repotted, took that out of the pot, just waiting still to see. My zinnias are flipping amazing. They are so gosh darn gorgeous. I will make sure I have these every year. I know there is a way you can pull off the dead ones and plant the seeds. I don't know if I'll do that next year or not, but I mean, this guy right here, he's so big. It almost looks like two plants together. Wow. Um, darn it. Right when I started filming, I had a big swallow tail butterfly. But this morning I have had um, quite a few bumblebees and, oh, there's a bumblebee right there. And honeybees. Oh my, there's another, there's another one. The honeybees. I had like seven honeybees on here earlier. I couldn't believe it. We did have a bad storm come through. There was actually a tornado nearby. And this little guy, he popped over. I've got two stakes in him, but it doesn't seem to be holding him up still. I need to, I need to fix that. Um, anyways, look at that little guy in there. Just enjoying himself. Uh, they all look gorgeous. My hanging baskets still look gorgeous. And let's take a look at the dahlias. You know, before we get to the dahlias, look at that little guy. Look at that little guy just in there. Oh, some more coming. My bird friends. Oh, there's a hummingbird over there. Trying to move slow. There he is. There he is. Ah, I just love my birds. I just love my birds. Ah, now I don't want to move because I'm going to scare them all away. And for the first time ever, yes. Oh, oh, there was a red cardinal. I haven't seen a red cardinal. He went to my neighbor's yard in a while. Um, I saw one of the sparrows using the bird bath. It made me so darn happy. <laughs> It was the first time I had seen a bird using it. Oh, there's a honeybee. I got all the, the buzzy bees. They're, they're out here busy. They love these dang zinnias. Like, love them. I'll definitely be bringing these back. And then another friend came to visit. I don't know if you can see his coloring very good in this video, but they like the new feeder as well. I don't know if you can see how pretty that hummingbird is. It's like a very vibrant green. Ugh, so cute. All right, so now twice within a week, I was out here one day and a lady riding her bike by the road yelled up to me that she loves my flowers. That literally just made my day to have a stranger just say that. And then earlier I was out here and somebody was driving by and stopped their car and said, your flowers are gorgeous. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. So happy. All right. Do you remember this guy? Well, half of him broke. I ended up just having to cut that half off. But this guy, oh, the side that didn't break, he's going to get a flower soon. And he's pretty tall. This one's going to be getting a flower soon. So I can't wait to see what those are. Look at how big this one is. Uh, let's see. It comes up to eh, about my boobs. So I don't know. These, this guy's got to be about four foot tall, I think. And uh, we got a couple, a couple of buds here. That one's going to be flowering soon. Another one there. Two on this side. OMG. And I've already deadheaded this twice. Um, and look at how beautiful it is. And it's got a whole bunch of flowers. That one's getting ready to open. Let's see. We've got one, two. Why do I have you zoomed in? Sorry. One, two, three, four. Oh, so, so pretty. Well, there you go. Thanks so much for joining me this week in uh, this video of fixing my shed floor and a little update on my flower garden. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it inspires you to tackle something in your house that maybe you've been afraid to or you, that you don't know anything about because that's the only way we learn is by doing. And I'm going to see you again next week. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. I appreciate you so much. Have a great day. Bye.